Time now for Uncancelled. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. Now, the gloves seem to have come off in ongoing tensions between the Sussexes and Sarah Ferguson after the Duchess of York slammed the royal runaways for trying to have the best of both worlds. In her most piercing attack yet, Fergie told The Independent, you can't sit on the fence and keep one foot in and one foot out. You're either in or out. But then don't cry about not being invited to weddings. You chose to leave. Now go and live it and be it. Hear, hear. And she doubled down on her comments during an appearance on Loose Women today. We're talking about the, the coronation invite today, which is beautifully done. Um, how do you feel about it? What are your plans? Do you know what you're going to wear that day? <laughs> how does this pan out now? Well, I mean, it's a huge day for the entire family. I personally will be... Um, having a little tea room and a coronation chicken sandwich and putting out the bunting. Because remember, I am divorced from him. So yes. I don't expect... Once you, you can't have it both ways. You can't be divorced and then say, no. I want this. You've got to hold You're in line. or you're out. Right. Yeah. Yes, Jane. Yeah. Yeah. Fergie's very thinly veiled attack comes after recent tax filings for the Sussex's Archwell Foundation revealed the tireless couple dedicated a whopping one hour per week to the charity. So could the real reason the Duke and Duchess of Delusion abandoned royal life be that they were simply wanting to avoid hard work but keep all the perks? Well, staff writer at The Spectator, Cara Kennedy, joins me now. And, Cara, look, you really investigated uh, these IRS filings and came up uh, with a theory, didn't you? Yeah, well, uh, for the last three years, Del, I've been trying to figure out exactly what Archwell is. It started off as a char- charitable entity. When they left, they said that they were going to be putting time into the charity work. They wanted to be the kind of Hollywood um, philanthropy couple like George and Amal Clooney. Um, and then it progressed from charity to kind of making money. So they started Archwell Productions so they could do the Spotify and Netflix ventures. Um, But yeah, I think ultimately they came to the conclusion that it was just too much work because, as you just said, um, the tax returns show that they put in a whopping one week each of work, 52 hours a One hour a week. Um, One hour a week. So they spend one hour a week helping other people and the rest of the time making lots of money for themselves. Well, I think this is the conclusion that they came to, is they they wanted to make money. Uh, They don't take a salary, how noble of them, for the one hour a week at um, Archwell. But like like we've seen over the past three years, they do spend a lot of time doing other things. So Harry has his chief impact officer, whatever that is, at Better Up, where we don't know his salary, it hasn't been announced, but it's probably absolutely one thing. Um, And then they have different ventures, obviously, Netflix, um, Harry's memoir. So they seem to... Again? Exactly. They seem to put a lot of time into making money. Yeah, they've got one motivation, don't they? They've got one motivation. And I think uh, your analysis is actually completely correct, that this is why they left the royal family. They didn't want to do the tough yards. They didn't want to do the hours and hours. Because believe me, if you're part of the royal family, and I know we can criticise them for having a luxurious life, but you know what? You work multiple hours a week, you know, I mean multiple hours, uh, for the good of the country, for charity, not for the good of yourself. Well, Megan famously said in Australia, it was reported uh, when she was doing the walkabouts, I can't believe I'm not getting paid for this. So she's always had money on her mind. She's always been money motivated. We know that. Um, But yeah, it just shows that, like you just said, uh, being a working royal is a hard job. I mean, look at Princess Anne, hundreds of of different events she has to go to every year. She's very hard working royal and she gets on with it and shuts up, you know. And I also feel like, Cara, they are treating the royal family like a reality show at the moment. The Daily Mail reporting on its front page tomorrow that the RSVP deadline has passed, but Harry and Meghan still haven't informed the king whether they're even going to bother to turn up for the coronation. Uh, shouldn't they just be uninvited now? It's too late. Shouldn't King Charles just say, you're not coming? 
Well, I think Charles has been pretty smart with this because if he didn't invite them, there would have been absolute uproar. It would have been another uh, woe is me, probably would have filled a few chapters in, in their memoirs. Um, so he did the right thing by asking them. But yeah, I think you're right. I mean, it's been weeks now since they were first invited. Either come or don't. I mean, if they do, it's kind of a double edged sword anyway. If they do come, it'll turn into the Ma Meghan and Harry show. Yeah. Do you really want them Look, next to the royal family? I just family think they've missed the deadline. They've missed the deadline. You had your chance. We've got to plan this. You're not coming. That's what King Charles should be telling them. And now look, Cara, also developing sources close to Prince Harry have claimed that the Jew did tell the US authorities about his history of drug use when he applied for his visa. Now, the new details come amid this intensifying scrutiny of Harry's immigration status after friend of the show Niall Gardner's Heritage Foundation sought transparency in the Duke's visa application after he admitted taking drugs in his memoir Spare. But Cara... If he did tell the truth, then he has received special treatment to enter America, which you or I would not receive. Exactly. Well, th this is the thing. I can't see it being a win-win for Harry either way. It's pretty lose-lose because if he did lie, it gives America the grounds to deport him back or reject his visa application that he'll have to put through this year. Um, for Lion and they're pretty strict about it and then if yeah exactly like you just said if he did tell the truth then this is just Harry who famously doesn't want to be treated any differently to you or I he doesn't want to, want to be a prince he doesn't want to be part of the royal family has received special treatment for something that me and you would would be not allowed to enter America for so yeah it's it's a lose-lose I mean he looks idiotic either way yeah, he does. Uh, look, I just want to quickly talk to you about uh, this whole Jacinda Ardern situation, because I found it absolutely fascinating. She has picked William and Kate over Harry and Meghan. Look at this. There's more work to be done on climate change, too, which is why she's taken a role on the board of Prince William's Earthshot Prize. Prince William and I spoke about his plan and dream for this before it had a name and so to be able to come back full circle and support uh, his work alongside an amazing board uh, I feel very lucky. So look personally I think William has made a big mistake here actually by linking himself to Arden. I've written a column about this for the mail tonight but put that to one side does this show how toxic the Sussexes now are because Arden is the queen of woke and even she wants nothing to do with Harry and Meghan. Yeah, well, I mean, it, she she chose a side uh, a few, I can't remember when it was now, a few months ago when she came out and kind of embarrassed the Sussexes by saying, yeah. oh, I didn't know that, that, that they were involved with this show I was doing with Netflix when we first started filming. I found about it, out about it afterwards. And now we know that was probably because she was planning to work with Prince yeah. William. But Indeed. as you just said, uh, did, uh, have they won? I don't know if they have won because she's such a divisive figure that you question yeah. why... Big mistake. Princess Big mistake. And I say this as someone who's very supportive of, of the Cambridges usually. But look, absolutely fascinating stuff. Kari Kennedy, staff writer at The Spectator, thank you so much.